The Five Impossible Tasks of Eden Smith is a middle-grade novel by Tom Llewellyn. It follows the adventures of 13-year-old Eden Smith and her quest to restore her grandfather's status in the Guildhall of Smiths. Along the way, she embraces her ancestral legacy and learns about the power of family. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Ahead, we'll explore the book, and I'll talk with the author about the inspiration behind it. Tom Llewellyn is the author of four novels and one picture book for children and young adults. His previous books include The Tilting House, The Bottle Imp of Bright House, The Shadow of Seth, and the picture book A is for Apple Unless. He joins us to talk about his latest, The Five Impossible Tasks of Eden Smith. Tom, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thanks, thanks for having me. Well, this book is set in Tacoma, where you live, but the world that Eden inhabits is, is very different. So I'm curious about what inspired this novel. Yeah, well, I mean, part of it was inspired by Tacoma because we are sort of an, an industrial town and sort of an, an artsy town too, but it just definitely has a long history of industry. So you kind of feel it sort of, the, the industrial aspect of the setting of this book, this sort of guild hall of old elderly metal workers is um, it just, it just sort of feels like a natural sort of place for Tacoma, just that sort of industrial past. The other thing was this idea of, if you think of like Hogwarts and Harry Potter as sort of the, you know, the hoity-toity prep school of the fantasy world. I think of this as sort of its industrial step, you know, sibling of uh, instead of, you know, instead of magic wands, you have smiths and forges and hammers and tongs. But their skill level is magical, really. And they, or appears to be magical when you look at it. And uh, the other thing is that there's this pride in craftsmanship to making these things by hand. So things like manufacturing and factory, those are dirty words. That's correct. That's right. The, the uh, factory they refer to as the F word, um, you know, playfully. But uh, I think that's right. You know, I, I think that we all have had that experience where you've you've struggled for three days to try to fix a, a a leaky sink or something and then you call in you know this you know 40 year veteran plumber who comes in and sort of puts his hand down there and wiggles it around and it's fixed and you just like it feels like magic when you watch somebody who's really masterful at their at their skill and um, that was what i hoped came across here and of course we take it to you know sort of a fantastical level in, into sort of the realm of magic realism, but the uh, the Smiths who who live in this guild hall really do not like the word magic. They really want to make sure that you know anything that appears magical is just because they're such masters of their crafts. Well, tell us about the plot here in the the five impossible tasks of Eden Smith. Sure. So uh, Eden is a, a young girl whose whose parents are killed on page one. Um, they're squished by a meteor, and she uh, is is suddenly orphaned and spends uh, about six years or so in uh, foster care while they try to locate another member of her family that she could stay with. And then finally, uh, you know, when she's come close to giving up all hope, finally they locate a grandfather that she's never met, and she's she has this moment of great hope and she enters into this guild hall to live with her her unknown grandfather and the day she moves in he's being kind of stripped of all his rights and and being you know imprisoned and um and then she learns out why that is and she learns out that the only way to save this grandfather and save any chance of her having a family is to complete this strange uh sort of uh historic rule set that they have in the guild hall of, of completing these five impos impossible tasks is the only way to restore her grandfather to a place where they could be together. And so that's what happens. And of course, kind of wackiness ensues and the, the hall itself is filled with a, with many sort of eccentric characters. And as you mentioned, they, they're all, many of them are metal workers of some form, silversmiths or goldsmiths or machinists and things like that. 
Well, one of the things I enjoyed about this novel is your use of language. And in, before she goes into the guild hall, the encounter she has with adults are very terse. Uh, this lady with the mole, where, but I still love some of the language. Uh, I believe I'm going to misquote this, but the lady with the mole, when she's basically uh, finally dropping her off at the guild hall, says, "If basically, if you need anything, hesitate to call me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid to to pull out all the jokes that I've been saying, you know, to friends and family members for my entire life to fill those things. I really hope that there's some humor in it. Uh, there's one scene, one of my favorite lines in the book is uh, they're at this strange game of what's called machinist bingo. And there's one of the people on stage is, is doing something that's uh, in, in the, in the form of ballet. And one of the characters uh, Auntie Irma, who gets a lot of the best lines in the book, says, I've always pretended to love the ballet. And so I like those sort of, you know, you have to you have to read it twice sort of lines to make sure you got the joke. So and the other thing I liked, it, it, again, it seemed like when she was outside the guild hall, like with the, the lady with the mole, it was very terse. It was very short kind of sentences. But once you got in the guild hall, the language was much more you know, there was a certain flourish to it and the way the grandfather talked and the way the sisters talked and all of this. So that was part of what helped sort of set this world apart. And in this world, there's definitely a caste system where the Smiths are at the top, the Jones are at the bottom, but yet Eden has roots in both sides of that. That's correct. Eden's father left the guild hall and married a woman who was a Jones. So she is this, she does exactly as you just said, she has a foot in both worlds. And she she goes into this sort of strange, mysterious place and realizes exactly as you said, that the Joneses are sort of the the serving class and the and the Smiths are sort of the, you know, the the upper crust of the of the hall. And so Eden is in this strange sort of perfect position to shake that up. And she, and she very much is motivated to do so. So for what age group is this novel intended? Yeah, this is called a middle grade novel. So it's somewhere around 9 to 14. I think the best way to understand it is it's, it's about the same reading level as like the first three Harry Potter books. So why do you think kids are going to identify with Eden? I think there's, you know, the thing that, uh, well, first of all, Eden is, she's tough. You know, she's gone through hard things in her life, but she is just a fighter and she's, She's not afraid to jump into things. And, and I really wanted her to be a heroic character. So I think there's that. And then I think in, in almost every book that I've loved, you know that there's an adventure setting and there's a, there's a plot that you know carries you along. But the main thing I think is that you want to spend time with those characters and you want to spend time in that world. So that's something I was definitely trying to accomplish. And I think the thing that we all want more than anything else in life is to find, is to belong, is to kind of find that group that you fit into your tribe or your family or whatever you call that. And that's really the the sort of not very subtle kind of ongoing message in this story is trying to find your place, find your family, whatever that looks like, whether it's blood or not. And the other thing I enjoyed about this story is you've got all these, like you said, you've got coppersmiths and swordsmiths and all these different smiths. But uh, there's this rivalry between the smiths and the pewter smiths. And it seemed interesting that you chose pewter as the uh, the metal that the nemesis would be part of. I don't know if I have a great reason for that other than it seems like a sort of trivial sort of smithing, right? It feels a little anachronistic at this point. So to be a pewter smith, I think you probably have a little bit of a feeling of, of you know, you may have some feelings of inadequacy or something of trying to constantly prove yourself. And so I think that's part of what Mr. Pewter Smith is the uh, sort of villain of the story, I guess you might call him the antagonist for sure. And um, I think that's probably part of what drives him. I'm curious about the challenge for you because you had to delve into this whole world of metalworking and, and learning about that. What was that research process or challenge like for you? 
Yeah, it's, well, it, interestingly enough, on the Peter Smith uh, angle, there was there actually was, in fact, he's recently passed away. There was a Peter Smith in Tacoma, and I went and actually we have a pewter bowl that that he spun for us, and you could kind of get your hands on that. So I did that. I went to a blacksmith shop to understand how that worked. And there's a, a, a an, an acquaintance of mine in Tacoma who works at the Atlas Foundry, which is a big foundry in Tacoma. And um, so I had a couple long conversations with him about how this stuff actually works and how melting points work. And then, uh, you know, I love doing research. I love learning about things. I have a lot of just natural curiosity. So I spent a lot of time just doing internet research and enjoyed every minute of it. This guild hall is a world unto itself. And it, it, like we said, there's sort of this caste system here. And as you might expect, the Joneses, uh, they live in the bottom part and the Smiths live in the top part. So there's that social sort of stratification going on. But as you point out, Eden has a foot in both worlds. And, you know, while some people might look down at the Jones, having that legacy and family background in both worlds actually turns out to be what helps her deal with these challenges. That's right. And uh, I was trying to be careful with the Joneses. Of the, on, on the surface level, it seems like they are definitely sort of the lower class, I guess you might say. But if you list the the roles they play you know there'll be the the cooks and the the sort of guards and things like that but then there's also kind of an ongoing joke that you know they're also the astrophysicists and the doctors so um if you're a smith smiths think so highly of their own skill sets and trades that they still still would sort of snub their nose at somebody who chose to be an astrophysicist as opposed to a blacksmith so there's a bit of an intentional humor there but there's definitely, you know, intended to take on this idea of class or racism or whatever you want to call it. That was an important part of this story. So family is a big theme, ultimately, in this book. What are some of the other themes that this novel explores? Well, I think there is, I mean, like you mentioned, the 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 metalworking, there is just, you know, I was really trying to get, I'm, I'm a huge lover of science and um, just trying to make sure that kids understand that there is a, a magic or a, a kind of gloriousness to science. Uh, there's one conversation when Eden is asking if she's ever going to go back to school. And the, uh, you know, one of the, the elderly old ladies in the story tells her that, you know, we take science out of the classroom, you know, what science without a bit of smoke and those sorts of things. And um, so that sort of STEM uh, ideas are definitely part of this. Um, and representation, Eden is uh, the main character in this, is a, is a young black girl. And I really want, I just think it's so important for, for you know, kids of all colors and, and ethnicities and, and orientations to be able to see themselves in adventure stories. Just as, just, this is not a big, it's not really a big issue book. It's not a big, you know, there's not, this is a book that is really intended to be just sort of a, a, a great pulp story. But I think it's so important just to, to have a great adventure hero that may look like you, no matter, you know, depending on who you are. You know, Tom, there's a question that I like to ask authors of fiction, and it's this. If you could spend a day in real life with one of the characters in your novel, who would it be and why? Yeah, I think it would have to be Auntie Irma, who's one of the, uh, there's two old ladies that um, the uh, that Eden lives with while she's there, while she's trying to, you know, restore her grandfather. And Auntie Irma is the one who's just the biggest character. She's got, like I mentioned, she's got all the best lines. She always carries around a teacup that has probably a little whiskey in it and just... I just think she would just be fun to hang out with. And she's also a, a very tough woman and a master of her, of her craft. Um, and just to be clear, all these characters in the books were in the book were also based on old relatives of mine who most of whom have passed on. So I would love to anti Irma was just one of my favorites. And um, I would love to get a chance to spend another day with her too. 
Well, this is such a fun story. Is there a chance that we might see Eden again in a future book? I hope so. Uh, I, I definitely put a lot of clues in there that uh, there's a lot more of the Guild Hall to explore. I tried to set up a lot of sort of, you know, loose threads that could be explored in in sequels. Uh, sequels always depend on book sales. So I hope uh, that, you know, I hope this discussion right here helps with that. And I hope I would love to spend more time writing about this. And uh, so let's we'll see. This middle grade novel is The Five Impossible Tasks of Eden Smith by Tom Llewellyn. Tom, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you. If you'd like to purchase The Five Impossible Tasks of Eden Smith, I placed a link for you in the description below. Thank you for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books and their authors, be sure to subscribe, like, and click on the bell to be notified about future programs. And if you're interested in books for young adult and older readers, be sure to check out my Some Books Considered channel. You'll find a link for that below as well. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading. <laughs>